for all of the brain surgery I'll require after this. And now, our king has cancer. Princess Catherine's recovering from serious abdominal surgery that will keep her away from public duties until at least Easter. The monarchy is unquestionably still finding its footing after the death of the late queen. But through every crisis, one man has stood firm against the barrage, resolutely maintaining a pretty special gift for making everything all about him. Yes, Prince Harry is back on our screens, and I suspect a lot of people shared my excitement when they heard this. In moments, the Duke of Sussex will be hurtling headfirst 60 miles an hour down a winding track of ice in the mountains of Canada. That sounds Unfortunately, fun. Harry emerged unscathed and made it back up the slopes to deliver a heartwarming message of peace and reconciliation. At least that was the plan. We see it on a on a day to day basis. Um, you know, the, again, the the strength of the, of the family unit coming together. Of you, process. Why are you interviewing him at the top of the slide? He wants to go down again. Let 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 him have a few more slides. He he just he came, he came back up the hill so he could go down again. This is the middle of his playtime. <laughs> That's the fact that there's so much happening back uh, with who, who cares? Apparently chat. I threw that in there thinking that chat would reject monarchy. And yet I think the results of our uh, a little democratic project show that the, the kids still yearn for a monarch. Your family. I have my own family. Right. So as we all do, yeah. I've got you know, other trips planned um, that would take me through the UK or back to the UK. Hey, Sheckley. Thank you for the three gifted tier one subs. You got BBBBB in there too. And code mode. Hell yeah. Let's go. That's the level of BWA energy I like to see in chat. Someone who has tasted of the brain rot I have procured and felt so grateful they were going to drop some subs and donuts. I appreciate you, Shackley. Thank you so much. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll stop in and, and see my family as much as I can. B-W-A. Really? Even in a schmaltzy softball interview with why, him. Why is he so mad? Why are you so... Piers Morgan, why are you so mad at, at Prince Harry? Who, who gives a shit? Mo it, it's 2024. Let the monarchy die. With American Breakfast Television, Harry is prickly and defensive, and with good reason. Illness will bring us back together, he says, before immediately clarifying that he's staying on the opposite side of the world because it, actually he's got plenty of his own things to be getting on with. But rest assured, loyal subjects, he'll still pop in when he feels like it, if he can, time permitting. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure all of England is really waiting on bated breath on uh, regarding what Prince Harry's supper plans are. Yeah, life in the UK really revolves around this guy who happened to be born into a family that happened to be the monarchy. Yep, uh, yep. It's 2024. We really still care about that. Later in the same interview, Harry makes a stunning admission that he's not considering becoming an American citizen. Wait, Mor Morgan, Piers Morgan is still mad about Meghan Markle? Wait, was Piers Morgan one of those people who was really mad that uh, Prince Harry married a black lady? What do you think about becoming a citizen? It's, I, have, I have considered it, yeah. yeah. Yeah? Do it. What would... What would stop... Do it, Prince Harry. Chat, finally, we can steal... We can steal one of England's own... We can finally complete our revenge on Great Britain, all right? We can get our revenge on Great Britain by stealing their firstborn son. Stop you from doing it? I have no idea. You know what it might be? You have to give up your titles to become a US citizen. I'd say the biggest senior member of the British royal family whose only remaining relevance comes from monetizing his ever weakening royal links is a pretty obvious barrier. Whether the US authorities would even consider making Harry a citizen after he gloated about his prodigious drug use in his memoir Spare is another issue. And just hours after revealing that he might abandon- Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a really high chance that uh... The U.S. would deny Prince Harry citizenship because he talked about doing drugs one time. Yeah, sure, bud. Yeah, okay. In Britain for good, Harry began his briefings all over again. This time, let it be known that 
Heroically, he's prepared to don his ginger cape and soar back to Britain, fulfilling some of the ailing king's duties while he's treated. In a typically irritating millennial missive, Harry has offered a, quote, hybrid working model, the regal equivalent of meeting on Zoom in your underpants. Prince Harry is keen to be reconciled with his father and has been telling people that he wants a return, that he's happy to step in in some sort of temporary royal role while his father's away unwell. Obviously, the king has cancer. He's away from public duties. But also, Princess of Wales is off. She's recovering from abdominal mm. surgery. She's not going to be around until Easter. What I've been told is that Prince Harry is very keen. He's always wanted to have a foot back in the fold. He mm. never really wanted to be all the way out. Hmm. All very valiant, Harry, but there's one little problem. Nobody wants you back. Four years ago, Harry and Meghan abandoned the royal family and the monarchy and resigned their royal duties to embark on a new life in California. The late Queen was crystal clear at the time. You cannot be half in, half out. If you go, you're gone for good. And it seems that the King himself has agreed with that. Harry jetted into the UK immediately after hearing his father's cancer. No, I don't have a ginger cape. I have a, a, a black romper that kind of looks like I'm wearing a cape, and I have a blue cape. And I think that's it. I think, I think that accounts for all of my capes. The diagnosis. No one can criticize him for that. But he might have been surprised at the less than hearty reception. The King's aides made Harry stay in a hotel. He was allowed just one hasty 30-minute meeting at Clarence House, not at Sandringham, where the king flew off on his helicopter to recuperate. Because you know why? They were kind of worried that they wouldn't get rid of Harry and also a little bit worried that someone who's committed... Piers Morgan is still talking like he's infuriated, but I don't know why. It's very disconcerting to me. All the private thoughts of his family to books and podcasts and television interviews in a scathing, derogatory manner might just do it all over again. They also knew that the king is a 75-year-old man being treated for a very serious illness. I wonder, you know, the coolest thing Prince Harry could do is become king and then dissolve the entire monarchy. That would, that would be so cool, dog. That would be the coolest thing. I would love that. Let's make him an American citizen, and then he inherits the, uh, the monarchy. Or, even better, he dissolves the entire goddamn thing and then becomes a U.S. citizen. This needs time to rest. He doesn't need to be part of the ongoing Sussex psychodrama. Now, compare and contrast the dignified behavior of Prince William, who's been taking care of his wife and only just returned to public duties. Last night, he attended the BAFTAs and glided around the place with a gravitas and decorum that he always does. No vainglorious narcissism, no attention-seeking, no self-pity. Of course, there was no meeting at all last week between Harry and his brother. Harry's supporters, apparently there are some of them somewhere, felt that was spiteful. Really? They must have had the recall skills of a goldfish or President Biden. Don't forget that this time last year, the royals were still reeling from Harry and Meghan's Netflix show, which condemned Britain and the monarchy as irredeemably racist and torched the reputations of their closest family members. It was terrifying to have my brother um, scream and shout at me and my father say things that just simply weren't true and, and my grandmother, you know, quietly sit there and, and sort of take it all in. Harry went on to maul his own brother on that show and smeared his own father. The king as a liar. The monarchy was directly accused of destroying two of its own to protect itself. Even the late queen was appallingly presented as a dupe, manipulated by sinister courtiers in a dark plot to smear the poor son. I mean, she, she, was, she was like a bajillion years old. Like, it's not, it, it's not really all that of a conspiratorial thing to say that, like, maybe the younger people around her had more of a say in her day-to-day -day affairs than she did. Sussexes. As if that six-hour onslaught of sycophancy and sedition wasn't enough, along came the memoir. Across 416 pages of pure poison, the Prince of Privacy revealed toe-curling details of an excruciating... I, I do have to say, watching stuff like this does... Weirdly is, like, one of the, one of the things that makes me proud to be an American. You know? I, I love that we don't have, you know, an explicit royal line... Because you know if we did, conservatives would be insufferable about it. 
you know, because inevitably, like, you know, these these kind of monarchical organizations tend to be fairly conservative in their nature. And you know, you know, the like, people would be all over that. So many people in America, like, wish that they had a title of some kind. Because then it would show that they're better than other people, you know? And, uh, th- yeah, they're already insufferable, uh, insufferable about Ronald Reagan. Think of how much more insufferable they would be if there was, like, a bloodline and, like, uh, historical power attached to it, you know? But uh, it does make me glad to be an American because we don't have that. And in fact, fought to not have that. And, uh, you know, started a long line of like, you know, imperfectly, mind you, overthrowing monarchies. You know, uh, uh, like other countries around the world saw it was possible, overthrew their monarchies, overthrew the British establish their own democratic representation. I think that's wonderful. A little less wonderful when the United States props up monarchies elsewhere around the world, but, you know, on the whole, I think democracy is a pretty great thing. And deeply personal disputes with his family, including this about his brother. He grabbed me by the collar, ripping my necklace, and he knocked me to the floor. I landed on the dog's bowl, which cracked under my back, the pieces cutting into me. We all laughed, of course. Do you think William laughed at that? The man who will be our next monarch would laugh at being ridiculed and mocked in that manner by his own brother? Is it really any wonder that Prince William wants nothing to do with him? The Prince of Wales is now facing up to the massive responsibility that awaits him as Britain's next head of state, but his own brother has gone out of his way to shatter his reputation and that of his wife. Why on earth would he want to reconcile with someone like that? It's been a relentless one-way attack. That was a low point for Harry, but Harry, well, he can always find a way to go lower, digging deeper and deeper until he finds the gutter. He called Camilla, the new queen and the love of his father's life, dangerous and a villain. Reportedly, he refused to even be in the same room as her when he came over on his mercy mission last week. Harry's also boasted about his drug use and losing his virginity. You know, like... Piers Morgan is mad the same way, like, someone's best friend would be mad on their behalf, you know? Like, this is really bizarre. He revealed the number of people he killed in Afghanistan, breaking all normal rules. (laughs) What do you mean he spoke ill of the woman his dad cheated on his dead mom with? (laughs) What? What do you mean? <laughs> also, yeah, what what was the deal with Piers like being like, we ah yes, that story of a small child having uh, a, a lacerated back. We all laughed. We all had a good guffaw at that one. Like, my God, d- d- in the UK, do you guys yearn so much for like the days of child minors? Like, what what's what's the deal? of how the military behave. He still details some intensely private conversations with the king who begged him not to make his final years a misery. We don't need to wait for history to judge how he's getting on with that. And as the global media he supposedly loathes gorged on the red meat he'd toss them, Harry did precisely what any dignified member of Britain's proudest institution would never do. He told the TV studios with lurid tidbits for clapping seals. Can you... Pierce, is the irony lost on you that you're having this guy on your show <laughs> to do exactly the same thing? <laughs> like, like you're having him on your show to castigate him and further mo- monetize those tasty tidbits. Like, goodness. Can you explain how it is that the Are we clapping seals now? No, we're clapping manatees. Get it right. Royal standard got frost nipped. <laughs> We've taken quite a leap from, yes. from grief and trauma to, to my todger. 
Todger. That's a that's a very gentle it's, word. It's a gentle Todger. Sounds like a nice nickname. Was that befitting of a member of the royal family? Can anyone seriously take Harry seriously as a council of state, shouldering the burden of a thousand years of history as Britain's representative across the world? Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, no, no one's going to remember or care that he went on Stephen Colbert. <laughs> Harry and Meghan are not exactly turning down the gas on their flamethrowing. Their client journalist and professional lickspittle, Omid Scobie, published a book in which he accidentally outed the King and Prince Ca Princess Catherine as racist. An implausible, ludicrous claim, which unwittingly did more damage. Yeah. How, da how dare you claim that the British royals would ever be racist? Name me one time... The British royal family did a did a racism. Without mentioning India, the transatlantic slave trade, the scramble for Africa, or various other uh, settler colonial projects. Also, don't don't quote them any time prior to the 1700s. Damage to the Sussex racism smear than anything else. And they jetted to Jamaica to attend a movie premiere just as King Charles revealed he'd been treated in hospital for an enlarged prostate. Posing for smiling photographs with a Jamaican prime minister who literally wants to abolish the monarchy. Based. Like, that, that's, that's cool, though. We, and you should abolish the monarchy. Bl bloodlines shouldn't dictate who holds power and leads your country. Okay? Even, even on the level that the uh, royal family currently leads, you know? For Harry to now claim he's ready and willing to serve his country and his king is frankly an insult. We all know what this is really about. Netflix is reportedly planning to pull the plug on Harry and Meghan's $100 million deal. Their series caused a lot of media outrage, but didn't even crack the top 200 shows on the platform last year. Spotify cancelled Meghan's dreary podcast. Without their royal links, the brutal reality is that Harry and Meghan are of no interest to anybody. And that's why they're rebranding yet again to double down on their dubious royal status. Their previous website, Archwell, inspired by their son Archie, now automatically redirects to Sussex.com. A glossy picture of the couple dominates the main page, overlaid with a text to the office of Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. The website has nothing to do with king and country or the royal family, and Harry and Meghan have no royal duties to speak of. They never put a shift in. They're brazenly exploiting... So... Oh, they, they didn't put a shift in at being a blood relative. What? How, how has this been going for 10 minutes? ...in the institution they simultaneously profit from trashing, and we're all being taken for the ride. The late queen was right. They can't be half in, half out, and they're out. They sold their royal souls for life as reality stars, trading every private cough and splutter for cash. The king should now return the favour and strip them of their tenuous titles and end this Sussex circus for good. Well, to debate all this is my royal pack. Man, I, I, I wish I had known I could have just skipped this. I guess if I had looked at the timestamps, I would have known that this was a 10-minute long monologue... Wait, I thought I thought Prince Harry would be in the uh, in this video. Silly me. Never mind. I'm the uncensored contributor, Paul and Adrian. We're in too deep to stop now, but I am disappointed. The royal editor, Sarah Hewson, and from New York, the economist Maureen Callagher. Well, welcome to all of you. Um, all right, let me start with you, Sarah, to, to set the scene here. But what's really going on behind the scenes? Lots of messages 
seemingly being communicated to the media. Mixed messages, I think. Very much mixed messages. Um, what do you read into it? What should we read into it? It's really hard to read between, between the lines here, but there were reports over the weekend that Prince Harry has made it be known that he would be willing to make a temporary return to the royal fold to try and relieve some of the pressure on the royal family while his father Do we and believe his sister this, first of all? Look, I, I mean, it I looked well-sourced to me. Yeah, I, I think... I, I mean, I think it's... This is... As an American, this is very weird to watch. Probably very likely that he has said at some point, and, and perhaps in some ways we could say it's laudable, he said, look, if you're really struggling, I can come back. I will do you that. Know what I found, but it's not going to happen. You know what I was struggling with, using the word struggling, was his explanation that, you know, these kind of family uh, situations where someone's very sick can bring everyone back together when he, according to the other members of the family, is single-handedly responsible for all the fallout in the first place. But it seems to me, from his tone and his language, that he is now seeking some kind of rapprochement. It's much more conciliatory language that we're hearing from Harry. No more demands for an apology from the family before any kind of But from of what contact. I've read, and it looked pretty well sourced again, an emphatic no thanks. Yeah, particularly no way back. Particularly from Prince William. I think that's the biggest mountain that Harry has to mm. climb. It may well be that behind the scenes there are cordial conversations taking place with his father. And that is what he's talking about when he says, you know, this can bring families back together. And so it should. You know, his father has cancer and has always wanted Harry to come back. There's a big difference between family relations and, and then Harry making an official comeback as a working member of the royal family. The terms of the Sandringham summit were absolutely clear. All in the late queen or all said, out. You can't be half in, half out, okay. you're in or out. Let me bring in Maureen here. I mean, Maureen, um, I've got to say, whenever we try and find people in America to defend Harry and Meghan, it's almost impossible. Nobody wants to come on and defend them over there. What is the mood about them over there? Well, it appears, and this is, again, it seems like we talk about this all the time whenever I'm lucky enough to do your show, the, the feeling of Americans, and we have absolutely had it. And ha have the temerity we? of Harry to go on an American morning breakfast program, Good Morning America. H have we? Because as an American, none of us give a shit. Like, not, not even a little. I, I haven't thought of Harry and Meghan in, like, three years. And use a sort of trumped-up event a year out promoting the Invictus Games to happen next year to soft-pedal... Uh, uh, some sort of possible reconciliation with Prince Charles, and then to later leapfrog off of that with a story placed in the Times of London with this bombshell claim that not only did Harry want to return and was willing to help out, what an offer, uh, but that the, the palace might be open to that as well. Um, it's been really a remarkable two weeks in terms of just the the timeline of events and the series of humiliations that Harry and Meghan have suffered from the breakneck 24 hour trip to London, to the UK to see Charles and to get only 30 minutes to hear later from Charles's staff that they quote, couldn't wait to get rid of him because they were afraid he would never leave. Who, who is this woman? I guess the, the biggest Prince Harry fan. Uh, in America, I, I guess. No no one's keeping tabs on, on what they're doing here. N unless they're British. <laughs> to William not seeing him nor speaking to him. To William then saying emphatically, and Charles's office briefing emphatically, there is no way back for these two. And when you couple that with Meghan's rare quietude this week, she was seen but not heard from on GMA in America. 
She was barely mentioned in the Times of London, and when she was, it was at the bottom of the piece. I actually think there's quite a lot of intrigue happening right now, and it will still, it will continue to unfold in the coming weeks and days. Yeah, and I'm afraid the cynic in me says that this is all because their life in America is not going as well as they hoped. The millions have been stemmed by them being turfed off platforms like Spotify because they were effing grifters, according to one of the executives there, and produced terrible content. And the, in their desperation... The tr Just uh, completely unrelated out of, out of left field. Uh, Chuds on, uh, on, on Twitter are trying to get Chaya Rycheck to sue me for defamation um, for calling her a deadly stochastic terrorist. Uh, as part of a tweet where I talked about how uh, a group of girls beat a non-binary trans teen to death and uh, I pointed out that Chaya Rychik had actually targeted that same school a couple years earlier and got a uh, teacher fired for saying that he would stand up for his uh, queer students as if he were their own father. So, like, she she quantifiably made that school less safe for for trans kids. And who's to say that that if that guy had still been there, if that teacher had still been there? Maybe there would have been an intervention before this. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, I, I nothing I said in that tweet is defamatory or, or libel. Also, due to uh, our First Amendment rights, unfortunately, there's there are no stochastic terrorism laws in America, so. I, I'm not even saying that she's guilty of illegal activity. She probably should be, but she's not. In a just world, would she be? Yes. Try and maintain their very high standard of living and their celebrity status, which is all they have now out there. They've now flipped Archerwell, the charitable organization named after their son, to Sussex.com, which seems to me a flagrant abuse of all the uh, accepted practice with the royals. You do not explicitly exploit your royal titles like that. So you put it all together and the jump on the plane when clearly he wasn't expected or particularly welcome, it turned out, uh, and you left, I think, with a really cynical taste in the mouth, which is this is all about preserving their brand. Paula. Stochastic terrorism is legal in the U.S. Yeah, uh, to elaborate on that, basically in the United States, the First Amendment protects your right to say basically whatever you want um, outside of some very specific instances. But um, stochastic terrorism as a concept is essentially saying, oh, won't somebody, somebody do something? Won't somebody do something? Won't somebody do something until somebody actually does it? But it's not considered a direct correlation, which is what's necessary to essentially say that that was a direct incitement to violence. You know, like in America, it basically needs to be someone tells you, go and kill that guy, and then you go and kill that guy. That, that would be a direct, uh, like, use of your words that would, like, be illegal in the United States. But saying, oh, man, that guy has such a nice store, it would be a shame if something happened to it. And then something happens to it. Well, that's not necessarily a direct correlation, you know? So, yeah. No, I didn't see that Valhalla video. 
So saying, why won't you send, why won't someone merc the prez and saying, I want to merc the prez in a video game or different things? Well, honestly, um, yes. But also, due to the nature of that particular claim, there would be more uh, scrutiny and less charitability granted, you know? Like, the, the president gets, like, special treatment in that regard. Preserving a brand, uh, Piers, uh, yes, you are very cynical. What has happened is that a son has discovered that his father is suffering from cancer. And in his dash to be by his side, he did whatever he could to get there, to spend that time with him. Now, I have also read that Prince Harry's time was limited by the men in suits, however they, they're, they're referred. But Being that, wasp and fly as Harry, yeah. Yes. Like, they were just getting a, was, Charles and Camilla were just getting a helicopter to Sandringham, right? The king is the king. If he wanted to spend longer with his son who flown all the way from Los Angeles, he'd have spent longer with his son and the chopper would have waited. That's the real world. So this idea that well, actually Charles was furious and would have liked to just carry on for hours or even get on the chopper and come with us, son, which is what I would do to my sons because they still talk to me and don't trash my family on television every 10 minutes. That's the real world. So I think you're accepting that you've read, read that story as well. Um, and that you are choosing to ignore that story no, I'm calling, and to focus I'm calling, on the story that, I'm calling bullshit. that suits I'm calling your story. Bullshit on that story. And, and we can't do that. Well, we know the chopper because, took off. Because what's important... To Sandringham, where he was just going to rest. What's important is to recognise that Prince Harry, he has, hasn't he, sent out that fig leaf. He is saying... What's important to recognise here, Pierce, is that Prince Harry despite all appearances to the contrary due to his uh, bloodline, is actually a human being, Pierce. He, he feels emotions like the rest of us. He feels pain and sorrow, presumably. Uh, and we should remember that humans have certain needs, Pierce, like food. And, <laughs> and the ability to see their parents when they're dying, you see. He has a lot of feelings about that, Pierce. Into everybody, I want That is peace. true. That is true. And but I would say to that, the fig leaf has been snapped in half or whacked back. I mean, that's the reality of what happened here. And that's unfortunate. So I don't dispute that he wants to send out a fig leaf. Mm. What I do think is true is whilst Charles is his son, he may think, you know what, I, I just need to suck this up and just put up with it and let him back. William is utterly implacable. Yeah. I mean, I'm told it, no way after what Harry did to his wife and with that book, not a chance. And so what, what do we do about that? Do we define the lines even more? Do we dig the trenches even further? Or do we support this family? I think we strip the, the royal family. I think, I think, you know, the easiest thing? When I saw the Sussex.com stuff, I was like, really? You're even going to do that? You're going to make it that transparent? I come from Sussex. I've spent more time in Sussex in the last week than they have in their lives. So right? do you not want them to earn money, Pete? I don't want them to exploit royal titles for personal financial gain. No. They're a me <laughs> He's a member of the royal family. Doing no royal duty to justify not, exploiting like the titles. To. No. He would like to. No. Well, and he's he now saying to be able to help. All right, but, okay, but okay, sir. This comes to the, the nub of this debate, doesn't it? Because, yeah, I'm sure he does want to. Because I'm sure he's seeing, particularly, I think, from the platinum jubilee balcony scene onwards. You're either one of the stars or you're not. Well, right? and interestingly, the position that Meghan would have wanted to be in, not playing second fiddle, actually, they'd be right there now. Right. If they'd stuck around, yeah. they'd be right there, right at the centre. I totally agree. The and they, and, but to me, they blew it, but they blew it in such spectacular fashion. Look, just put yourself in the, in the heads of this family. I can't imagine caring about this this much. 
this is this this is like anthropo like anthropological to me. I can't fathom being this interested in like one particular family to this degree. Putting aside their royals, right? You've got these two in in America repeatedly, not just once, but from Oprah Winfrey on, on, onwards, repeatedly trashing them mm. in the most vile manner in public. Find, you know, a tabloid newspaper can do it. I've done it as a tabloid editor over the years, uh, but always had the likes of Harry immediately piping up, attacking the papers for being intrusive and so on. Fine, he's entitled to that view. But what's he been doing? It's any different, honestly. Oh, but forgive me for interrupting, but we're acting it's as good, if Amish Harry just woke up one morning and decided that he no longer favoured his father, no longer favoured his family. That's not what happened, Piers. We are talking about a lot. That's often, Piers, you see, time is linear and things occur in the past, and but we experience them in the present, and then we move past them and develop as people, Pierce. Now, Prince Harry, in the past, had an issue with his father, but now time has passed, and he's experiencing human emotions, Pierce. Lifetime, in terms of Harry thinking and believing that he has been mistreated. Now, I don't know much about, about Princess Diana. We're talking about a timeline that really begins when he meets Meghan Markle. Well, right? And again, the cynic in me... So we blame the woman. Well, we blame the outsider. i got to say, if one of my... Harry... Yep, Prince Harry was seduced by, by that bastard Eve. And now, and now she has twisted him around her voluptuous lady parts and he has changed seduced away from god's light sons, was one of my sons call before if one of my sons long. came don't to do me, him a disservice one of my son, by denying him that if one of my sons going to miss it dad great. yeah but the the difference with that cn is that donald trump was a figure who carried actual political power right the royal family doesn't do that in the UK. Not not really. Like the the issue is that Donald Trump not getting a coke might be something that causes him to launch World War 3. Whereas, you know, the royal family uh, like tripping over their shoelaces or something isn't isn't something that will affect anybody's lives even in the UK. Great news. I'm going to marry an American divorcee who's five years older than me, God. and she wants nobody from her family at the wedding apart from her mother on either side, right? And has just disowned her dad, et cetera, et cetera. Just I think I would say, to be fair. I think I'd say, that is, if I were you, I'd. Uh, to her father. If Let's I were you, I'd, I'd swerve this one if I were you. to her father before the and wedding. And her father had staged the photographs, et right. cetera. Yeah. But. And let's remember the mood around the time of that wedding. There was a huge sense of optimism about what she could bring and that Harry had finally found yep. someone who could hold their own and could deal with I wrote with a it. piece on the wedding day myself yep. about what a breath of fresh air it was to see a non-white wedding. P Piers is... Uh, is weird, especially about... Um, race with a woman from a biracial american background everyone loved it this idea that the media were out to get Meghan markle out to get them as a couple totally invented revisionism i remember it all the papers were ecstatic absolutely ecstatic she was this fantastic yeah. glamorous actress. straight out of compton harry had been but wearing, then, but wearing then all the hypocrisy stars then all the that didn't suit the yeah but then, let me let me bring in maureen because it seems to me the tipping point was after the wedding when all the hypocrisy began all the preaching about 
carbon footprint and climate change as they used Elton John and George Clooney's private jets like a taxi service. Preaching, I get this, on the day of the half a million dollar baby shower, sending out a tweet about poverty on their Twitter account as they're literally having a half a million dollar baby shower with a bunch of celebrities in New York and then flying back on the Clooney jet, et cetera, et cetera. And I remember because I was... Oh no, R rich people caring about the poor? On a day when they're doing rich things? Say it ain't so. Writing a column at the time. Uh, about the ultimate all this, crime. A growing sense of disillusionment from the public that this lovely couple, who seemed so well suited and so good for the country, seemed to be getting into a place where they wanted to be constantly having their royal cake and eat it. That, that's what being a royal means. You, you get to have the cake and eat it. I, I, I feel pretty confident in saying that that's what royalty has almost always been about. Having your cake and eating it. I think both those things contributed. 100%. And that goes full circle to, as you pointed out, the relaunch of the Sussex.com website, which is a complete abrogation of what Her Majesty the late Queen told them there was to be no monetizing of their royal titles. That was why, per the Sandringham Accord, you are either in or you are out. One of the two. So they relaunch this website with Meghan's royal coat of arms. Again, either the royal family has mistreated you to the point where you are suicidal. Exactly. And asking for help that you are denied or you are so proud to have married into this family that you are boasting your coat of arms online. You are running an inc You're boasting your coat of arms online? Yeah, that's literally what a coat of arms is for. It, it, wearing a coat of arms? That was for being able to walk into a room and say, hey, motherfuckers, I'm here. It's me. Yeah, it's that bitch. I'm here. I'm loud and pay attention to me. That's, that's part of what it's for. It turns out being a member of a royal family isn't about subtlety. Incredibly lengthy CV in which you, without a shred of irony, say that one of your top priorities as whatever kind of philanthropist or activist she's spinning herself to be, prioritizes quote unquote family care. And if we really want to get down to the nuts and bolts of it, this is why Harry cannot be let back in and cannot be trusted. Kate is ill. What is ailing her is a very closely guarded piece of information. Yeah. That is their right. Harry and Meghan remind me of the fable of the scorpion and the frog. The scorpion asks the frog, How? to float him across a river. The frog says, you're a scorpion. You will bite me and kill me. And the scorpion says, it would make no sense. You don't, you don't, need, to, you don't need to waste time telling us the, the fable of the scorpion and the frog. We're, we're all adults here. We, we, we've, heard, we've heard it. We've heard it before. We, we know, you can just shorthand it for us. Um, but also, how is that at all at all analogous to this current situation how would harry and megan scorpion the frog that is the royal family in this in, in this case like would they actually do it would would they like I don't know, in, in this in this circumstance, like, is Prince Harry going to, like, go full John Wick and, like, kill his brother to seize the throne and then dissolve the monarchy? Like, what, what do you, what do you, what, what does a, what does a scorpion sting look like in this situation? <laughs> I can't cross the river without you. Halfway I just through, want to know scorpion stings the frog. The frog sense. says, why did you do that? The scorpion says, it's my nature. I can't help it. Yeah. That's Harry and Meghan. Paula, we have the scorpion and the frog, a perfect metaphor 
perhaps if Harry were here, he might say that he's been stung so many times that he couldn't take the pain. I'm sure any he would. He's been and whining about this. He, and that's years, why he yeah. spoke out. Well, I mean, you use the word whining, but of course, he is somebody who has, he says, he has suffered significantly and that it's impacted on his mental health. So I think the term whining. Let me ask Sarah on that be, point. Should be. So I wrote a column for the, for the Sun tonight about William, right, who I think has been amazing. Sh Shut up, Broad. You're on my show. Now, you toots, answer my questions three. You've got to put yourself in his shoes for a moment, right? So he loses his two beloved grandparents and mentors for potentially one day being king. His wife has been seriously ill. Mm. His father, the king, has cancer, which, apart from anything else, may mean that he himself has to consider potentially acceding to the throne earlier than he would have ever wanted to do. Um, he's, he doesn't speak to his only sibling, who's been trashing him in public, left, right and centre. And they both suffered the same trauma when they were kids of losing their mother, which was a trauma. I knew Dinah, I loved Dinah like we all did. It was awful, horrific, the whole thing. But I don't see that William has had to go through any worse than Harry. The only difference is that rather than go down the path of running to America and fleecing his titles for hundreds of millions of dollars whilst constantly trashing the institution that bestowed them, William has chosen silence, in public, dignity, decorum, and duty. Well, he didn't have much choice, did he, because of the position? Actually, he did. He, he could called. walk away. Well, Edward, I mean, Edward when he fell in love with an American harder. woman, walked yeah. away. But I think Maureen's point about Kate's illness at the moment is a big factor yeah. of why there was no meeting between those brothers, if ever that was going to be on the cards, mm, yeah. because he is be so him. protective mm. over his wife. And there is no trust there. There is no trust that anything, any conversations that happen aren't going to be briefed out. Harry to the even American wrote, media. just to remind everybody, Harry even wrote about private conversations with his father and his brother at, at Prince Philip's funeral yeah, side. In the grounds in the, of Bookmore House, when his father I mean, apparently think said, about, don't make my li last years a misery. Think boys. about that for a moment. Revealing conversations you have with your father and your brother at your grandfather's funeral. In a book. But it's why I said I thought Harry's tone has shifted because that interview on Good Morning America was yeah. actually pretty guarded. He talked about being grateful for the time he had. Also talked kids. about wanting to be American. And you know he why? He said it wasn't a high well, priority. Yeah, you know that. why? Because well. if he wants to be an American, he has to give up the titles. Yes, you can't. First have thing them. you have to do, mm. and Maureen, I'll bring you back in here. First thing you have to do if you take out American citizenship, you give up all your Do you know what Harry was called when he was here? The Spare, they called him The Spare because he'd only take the throne if William died or abdicated. I mean, I guess that's mean. But also, like... I guess I can see how even if you're a member of the royal family, that would lead you to just say, yeah, f fuck all this, <laughs> and like, go, go off and like go to America instead. Compared, compared to the UK under, like, constant derision by the tabloids, I, I guess I can understand choosing uh, the United States, you know? Shows a little bit of how he was treated. Yeah. Titles, if you're British. And so Harry would go back to just being Harry and Meghan. And by the way, good luck to those two with their empire commercial plans if they don't have the royal stuff to exploit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Pierce. It's almost like they were raised without the ability to do things outside of the uh, the the royal constraints. So it's is it really that shocking that maybe maybe like Prince Harry is struggling a little bit in the real world? I I don't know. I, I would say it's probably not shocking, and hell. Uh, Meghan Markle, like, she she can get back into acting. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, we saw that in America, and the first thing I thought was, well, so much for just Harry. You know, he's never going to give those titles up. Meghan clings to them as well. It is Exhibit A in terms of their rampant and unceasing hypocrisy. My favorite detail from the Whistler trip was that the head of in the Invictus event there was instructed to call Harry and Meghan Sir and ma'am. Oh, no. So if anyone thinks these two are just going to get back down with the rest of American civilians 
and you know Megan's gonna forfeit showing up in a glamour shot with a three thousand dollar Hermes coat while she's meeting wounded warriors. I mean, these two continue to dig their own holes. It is unlike anything I've ever seen. I mean, here in America, I consider it one. Again, the, the breathless coverage of this, it's unlike anything I've ever seen, Pierce. Uh, and this is the greatest downfall I've ever seen. And I've directly witnessed 9-11, Pierce. Like, th this is insane. Like, this is the, the hyperbole, the breathlessness of this. It's wild to me. Because especially coming from an American, like, like this lady, like, what are you doing with your life? That you, you care about this so deeply. Yeah, have some dignity, lady. Take heart in the fact that, like, we were able to throw off the yoke of that exact same family, like, a couple hundred years ago. Take, take a little bit of pride in, like, one of the few things America did that was actually good. One of the greatest pieces of performance art we've got going. <laughs> you know what? I think they lost most Americans, Sarah, when they came up with this obviously cock and bull story about being chased around new york at 100 miles an hour for two hours anyone who's been in new york knows that's impossible the traffic doesn't move I mean, you were you were dying to get in there so uh, well I, I was it's the point about the the dining out on the royal connections they were heavily criticized for the, the use of the sussex name yeah. they're going to take it as a family name and mm. um, look harry was harry wales George and Charlotte and Louis before they became the Waleses were the Cambridges. So there's nothing new about Why do you want your Sussex kids to have a royal title it, when you I, when you believe the monarchy as an institution has caused you such irreparable damage? Well, I agree with that, but I also find it interesting that Archie and Lilibet will be known as Sussex because actually it's a far less royal sounding name mm. for an American market than mm. Mountbatten Windsor. Yeah, but it is. goes for their Duke and Duchess, right? Uh, so I understand that Harry's issue um, is... Was... No, no, lady. Like, in America... We have no idea what royal names sound like. Okay? We we heard we heard Queen Amidala and we were like, "Oh, that that sounds royal." Like we we don't know what sounds royal or not cuz we don't have kings or queens here. Outside of drag shows and frankly, they they make basically any name work for them, okay? They 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 make it work. No no one knows like what whether Sussex is a more royal name or Winsbury. Oh, uh, we we know two kinds of British, and it's Cockney chimney sweeps. And then, and, and then, and then royalty. There's, there's that, that's it. Okay. <laughs> With the institution, and I know that you keep referencing that he's trashing his father and he trashing is. his brother, but I think we also need to be We're not fair. not referencing it, well, that's what he's done. I think we also need to be fair. It's right that Harry hasn't hidden behind the and a royal source reports because we know that that's what happens. Mm. Very often stories are in the papers about the, the Windsor House or the Sussex House or, or the Cambridge House, and it's a royal source is reported. Mm. Now, Harry doesn't have that to hide behind, but to suggest that there what are stories put out about what Harry... Harry doesn't have what? A, the, a royal source. Oh, please well, do me, me a favour. Yeah. Yeah. Well, please do yeah. me a favour. Yeah, yeah. Paula. What I'm saying is, Paula, we're not how hiding, do you think we what even? I'm is, how do you think? Hiding behind how do you that think is, People magazine. But the stories come how do you, out. How do you think People magazine knew about his fig leaf? The stories come out. You know how? You can't suggest. You know how? That nobody because is putting out the, stories against because Harry. Because his own people is. brief just as much as the palace. Okay, so you're accepting it, again. It you're accepting again what I'm saying then. I'm accept, briefs, I think you should accept. I probably know a little bit more with I, respect I, I about the way this I all works. To superiority. Having been that's part of the media you. for 35 and that's years, why I'm asking you. I can tell that's you, that's right. He and his wife use the media just as aggressively as anyone at the palace does 
on the other side. I can tell That's you that. That's my point. Anyway, grateful. We're going to leave it there. Thank you all very much indeed to my pack and to Maureen over. I, I can't, I can't, I can't. I like it would even if I entered into this this conversation knowing like I had my professional credibility on the line, like it would be so hard to pretend to care about any of this. Like, oh, I'm I'm a bigger royalist than you. No, I'm a bigger royalist than you. And then it, it's just my turn. I'm just like I, I, I don't. I, you guys can both be bigger royalists than me. I I I don't care. <laughs>